If you're in the market for buying a car, we might have some tips that'll help you out. So joining me right now, I have Terry on behalf of OMVIC. Thank you so much for being here today. My pleasure, thank you. And you know, for those at home who aren't familiar with OMVIC, what exactly is that? OMVIC is the provincial regulator. We uh, administer and enforce the Motor Vehicle Dealers Act and Consumer Protection Act mm -hmm. on behalf of the Ministry of Government and Consumer Services. Okay, so you're definitely here to kind of protect consumers when they're making big purchases like buying a car. That, that is our mandate, is to protect mm -hmm. consumers and create a fair and open marketplace. Mm -hmm. And there's quite a few different ways people can buy a car, and we have been talking about buying a car through a dealership before the show. And what are some things people should look out for when they're buying a car from a dealership? Yeah, even people that have bought cars many times, mm -hmm. uh, we often find they're not quite as savvy a consumer as they might have thought. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, we, we did some surveys, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the questions we asked was, if you sign a contract to purchase a car at a dealership mm -hmm. and you leave a deposit, uh, is there a 24-hour a, a cooling off period, B, 48 hours, mm -hmm. C, 10 days, or D, there is no cooling off period? Mm -hmm. And what was your answer? I, I think I had said it was the one day you had 24 hours. 24 hours. Yeah. And 86% of Ontarians think that there is a cooling off period or they weren't sure. Yeah. But the truth is there isn't. If you sign a contract to buy a vehicle at a dealership, mm -hmm. you signed a legal binding contract, there is no manda mandatory cooling off period mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really important that consumers looking to buy a car get informed. Yeah. And, and even some of the laws have changed. Uh, for example, another one of the questions we, we talked about is if you see an advertisement uh, for a, of a price for a vehicle from a dealer, mm -hmm. uh, when you go to the dealership, should you expect the dealer to add additional fees, maybe for things like administration mm -hmm. or uh, freight and PDI, or is that advertised price an all-in price? Well, I had said I assume they would add more fees. I'm not really familiar with it. And in 2010, the law mm -hmm. changed. And okay. now in Ontario, dealers, if they advertise a price for a vehicle, it must be an all-in price. Mm -hmm. They cannot charge any fees above that advertised price other than for HST and licensing. And that's the cost to put the license plates on the car to register it in, yeah. the, in the consumer's name. Um, unfortunately, we do see ongoing non-compliance with that regulation mm -hmm. and it's something that OMVIC is very aware of. We're doing a lot of efforts to try and make consumers aware of uh, all-in pricing and also we're addressing the issue with dealers through charges, through discipline and, and, and things like that. And, and we'd rather not have to do that but it's important. This law was designed to, to make uh, advertising for vehicle prices transparent for consumers mm -hmm. and it's important that dealers comply with it. And so consumers should know, dealers can't add fees on top of an advertised price. Oh, well, I think it's great that you're looking out for everyone because I know it's sometimes difficult to make those big decisions. You're spending a lot of money and you're not really sure always what you're getting yourself into. Yeah, that's very, very true. And if you do have a, a problem uh, with a purchase from a registered dealer, uh, not only does OMVIC have inspectors and investigators throughout the province and registration staff, but we also have a, a team at our head office and it's our complaints and inquiries team. And there's mm -hmm. 10 staff there and all they do is try and assist consumers who have encountered a problem with a dealership and they will attempt to, to negotiate or mediate, if you will, mm -hmm. a settlement to any problems. And then that's one of the, uh, and it's free to consumers, mm -hmm. and that's one of the services that OMVIC offers to Ontario consumers. Uh, but I think it's important that they, they realize that all these protections that we've talked about, all these consumer mm -hmm. protection laws and these services only apply if you buy from a registered dealer. None of these consumer protection laws apply if you buy privately. Mm -hmm. If you buy privately and something goes wrong, unfortunately, you're on your own. Yeah, there are no guarantees when you're buying cars like that. That's right. And you were telling me you're having quite a few, you're seeing quite a few issues when people are buying privately as well. We, we are, uh, yeah. particularly uh, be, uh, as a result of something called curbsiders. Mm -hmm. Curbsiders are illegal, unlicensed dealers. Mm -hmm. In Ontario, dealers must be registered with OMVIC and all salespeople too. Um, so people who want to buy and sell cars and don't want to be registered with us, what they do is, is they, they do that. They buy and sell cars, but they pretend that they're a private seller. Uh, they, the, the car that they're offering for sale, they'll claim that it's theirs, mm -hmm. and it's not. Uh, they're, they're an illegal unlicensed dealer, and unfortunately, common source of inventory for them, salvage auctions. Mm -hmm. They're buying wrecks that, the, that have been written off by an insurance company, fixing them up, often the repairs are dubious. 
practice, and yeah. then they're flogging them off to unsuspecting consumers, telling them that it's their own private vehicle, mm -hmm. or very often they'll say, oh, they're selling it for a family member or something like that, trying to explain why it might not be registered in their name. Gotcha. And uh, so if you're going to buy a car privately, you really have to get educated. You have to know about curbsiders, and I would encourage the consumers thinking about that to visit our website because we've got a lot of tips there to help you spot mm -hmm. curbsiders and some of the common tactics they use. Wow. I didn't even know all that. It was great, but I have been, you know, you know, made aware of some of my friends have bought cars and they've had the odometers turned back. And you were telling me that's another issue. It is. We see very few odometer rollbacks uh, on vehicles being sold by dealers. Yeah. And frankly, it's because the penalties for something like that are so severe mm -hmm. that dealer's probably going to have their license revoked. So yeah. we see very little uh, there. It's a common ploy with curbsiders. It, there's a common misconception that rolling back odometers on today's uh, vehicles with computers and everything is difficult. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's not true. Mm -hmm. For about five or $600, you can buy a device online, plug it into a car's uh, computer, and roll back the odometer. And it's very difficult to tell uh, that it's happened. And we, last year, we uh, charged and convicted one curbsider who had sold 42 pickup trucks. Oh every single one of them he'd rolled back the odometer oh and these were expensive vehicles these were thirty forty thousand dollar pickup trucks mm -hmm. uh... very high-end late model but they had previously been high mileage yeah. and they weren't when he sold them and while yes we were able to charge and convict him yeah. the consumers who bought those vehicles because they bought privately had no recourse mm -hmm. Wow! Like when it comes to buying these vehicles, you can just get yourself into a lot of trouble. So I think it's great that Omvic is kind of looking out for everyone. And if you want to have, uh, find out some more information, where can they go and do that? Omvic.ca. Okay, so pretty straightforward. There, <laughs> and, there, and there's great resources there, not only for buying privately and spotting curbsiders, but mm -hmm. great tips too for how to buy from a registered dealer. Great. Well, thank you for joining me today. It was my pleasure. <laughs> and when we come back, I'll be talking to our Mayor Trevor Birch. Don't go anywhere.